This is Steve from Boxing UK in association with Supreme CBD. Delighted to join ringside here in Manchester with Adam Smith. Hi Steve, how are you? Very well, and how, did you enjoy that? I did enjoy it, yeah, it was another really good night. Fantastic uh, atmosphere in here was, I think, amongst the best we've had so far. And it was hot and, and there was some uh, real good mixture of action. We had a bit of everything. We had some knockdown stoppages, come from behind performances. And I think um, we probably felt right at the beginning that Ellis Zorro was slight class above and he could box his way home and I thought he was brilliant in the quarter final maybe not quite as good in the semi and final but you know the competition increased um, but the right guy won it and uh, well done to him he told us all week that he wasn't bothered he wasn't worried about any of the others it will be a cool calm composed night not an easy night's work but it will be a comfortable night and uh, and that's what he did he was the best guy in it and uh, the best guy came through that's the second boxer tournament recently, Adam. It's a real opportunity, isn't it, for these guys just under the elite level or, or top level to make an name for themselves and push on to, to achieve something, isn't it? It's a fantastic opportunity. Um, we can all look at the world title fights. I just came back from Vegas where Shakur Stevenson, I think, announced himself as one of the pound-for-pound pound best in the universe. However, yeah, there's fighters up and down the, the UK, for example, who've really struggled during the pandemic and... There's some great stories tonight. You've got the head of year 10 in Ricky Reeves. You've got Anis Taj, who's come through a law degree. You've got um, Jack Fay, who was homeless a year ago. I mean, it's just incredible fighters and stories. And uh, I think it's, um, it's really important that, you know, Ben's got this tournament and, and we're supporting it on Sky and they're having, you know, terrific times under the lights and there's a platform and, yeah, it's brilliant. I think, it's, uh, I think everyone's loving it and they're enjoying it. They're putting everything into it. And I think I said after Coventry that you have one winner and seven, I didn't see them as losers, seven who gave it a, a crack and a real go. And I'm sure all eight can come on from that. So, yeah, really good experience, a life experience for the fighters and a great entertainment for the fans. It's a winner. Adam, I know we pushed for time. So can I get your opinion on a few of the boxing events that have happened recently? First of all, a couple of Sky Sports stalwarts announced their retirement this week. We spoke after Amelia Khan and Kelbrook and you were quite adamant that that was the right time for both of them to go. Are you pleased that both called it a day? Yeah, you're right, I did. I, I told you that night I was sat in between them and I felt that it was the, the best sort of possible solution. They hugged each other at the end of a 20-year a feud. Um, yeah, the fight was obviously Kel's night, but Amir you know, was brave to the end and went out in his shield. And I felt that was the time for both of them to call it a day. Obviously, Kel's performance made him think about you know, he rolled back the years, could he could he get another fight? But I think he's sensibly decided to call it a day and sort of go out on top. And Amy's got nothing to prove to anyone. He's given us a phenomenal career, roller coaster entertainment. He's a wonderful guy. I'm close to both of them, as you know. I've known them since they were kids, and uh, this is the right time for them to go on to bigger and better things with their life. And they made a great deal of money, and they seem pretty happy, and that's a great sign. And uh, I'm looking forward to sort of going back down memory lane with a pair of them, um, spending time with their families. And yeah, they, uh, I mean, stand out nights. They both had um, too many to mention in a quick interview, but yeah, they both duck nobody they put themselves into all the challenges they cover themselves in in you know in, in gladiatorial glory all the way through and they were great fun to work with so i'm going to miss the pair of them but they made the right decision well said adam, adam we caught savannah earlier um and she was a little bit boisterous so we say against clarissa shields accusations that injuries are fake she doesn't want to fight um i don't know if you saw clarissa shields was even calling out tasha jonas um that fight's still on, Adam, isn't it? As far as I'm concerned, absolutely. We saw the, the terrific, epic fight between Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano a couple of weeks ago. Now, this could be just as good. Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields have got the long rivalry. We've had Clarissa over here, shining in Cardiff, you know, stopping traffic and then coming up to Newcastle to watch Savannah. Savannah's in the form of her life. And uh, no, I mean, she's, she's got a little injury. We wait until that's healed up. She's got to go in 100%. And I'm sure that that colossal fight, that mammoth match um, in boxing, not just in female boxing, between Shields and Marshall will happen in the next few months. We just have to get a date. Are you still coming up our neck of the woods for this one, Adam? 
Well, we'll have to see. We'll have to wait and see. We'll have to look at dates and venues. Obviously, it'd be a great fight to have in Newcastle, but if it's a, a London fight or a Manchester fight, wherever it is, look at the Garden the other week for Katie and Amanda Serrano. It doesn't matter where the fight is. It's going to be watched by everybody. So uh, I cannot wait. And, uh, yeah, we'll put the finer details in the next few weeks when Savannah's injury heals up and uh, Clarissa and Savannah will go toe-to-toe -to -toe as we all want. In two very quick ones, then, with Huey Fury versus Michael Hunter. That's some fight, Adam. Yeah, I like the fight. I like the fight very much. Uh, I was with Michael in Vegas uh, the other day. He's very excited about uh, the prospect of coming back to the UK. Uh, obviously, we know him well, and Huey needs a, a real test at, uh, at top level, and I think that's a, a very good fight that I hope that comes off. I'll cut this bit out, Adam, just in case, because it was going into the final round, but Martin Bacoli's absolutely battered Tony Oka around the ring tonight. That changes the heavyweight landscape a little bit, doesn't I it? No, I hadn't heard that. So, uh, well, wow. I'm spoiled it for you, Adam. You didn't have it recorded, go, did you? There you go. Sometimes I think, I think in commentary, I heard that Conor Ben won in a couple of rounds. I didn't know that either. So uh, there we go. But yeah, that's uh, that shakes things up a bit. Last one. I have to say, on a personal level, Adam, today's not been the greatest day. But one of the highlights was watching you and Dave Caldwell watching that penalty shootout just before the second fight. Well, can, you, can you talk us through it? Well, Ben Shalom and I were there with Tasha Jonas for the uh, Carabao Cup final, where we had to go through the same heartache and got the victory. It was a bit stop-start today because, of course, Ben and I put on a show that clashed. We couldn't get back from Wembley in time, so we had to watch it in the dressing room. And I was surrounded by Man United fans. Not only my cameraman Dave Kane, but Fraser Clark, Dave. Colwell, you know, in the in the sort of foothills of Old Trafford, it was pretty horrible. But to come down here, we were on air. The penalty shootout happened. Dave Colwell was in bits. He was cheering Chelsea on, and it was an absolutely fantastic uh, achievement. So two in the bag. I think the quadruple we know is probably not going to happen. But let's hope we can uh, be successful in Paris. And I'm still trying to find a ticket. And so is Ben. So if you know any, Steve, let us know. I will do that. You do realise Carlo Ancelotti has left Everton, though, to deny you, you guys the Champions League this season, don't you? Yeah, of course, of course, of course. <laughs> Let's hope Everton stay up. I want to see it. Fingers crossed. Adam Smith, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. Cheers.